Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today we're going to talk all about comparison filters. We're going to give you a complete walkthrough of all of the filters that we have available under the comparison category. These are the filters that you need to compare values to one another and to check the validity of values inside your Xano function stack. As always, there will be timestamps down in the description for each filter, so if you need to look up a specific one, feel free to jump right to it or just bookmark this video for future reference. Let's get started. So the first filter we're going to be talking about today is bitwise not. Bitwise not will take the binary equivalent of a value and it will actually just flip those bits. So all the ones become zeros and the zeros become ones. So I have a very simple test case here where we are creating two variables. They both have a value of 9,999. However, the second value has the bitwise not filter applied to it. And then in the response, we're using the sprintf filter to change this into a binary format so you can see exactly what's going on here. And we're just doing this by providing a percent %b as our value, which returns the binary equivalent, and uh, returning our two variables here with and without the bitwise not filter. So let's go ahead and run this. Now this may look a little bit weird, but let me explain what's going on. So we have our first value without the filter, which is just the binary representation of 9,999. And then with the filter applied, we have this whole string of numbers right here. But what's going on is trailing zeros are not displayed in a binary value. So what we have is if we look at the end of this string here, we can see that this is the opposite of the original value. So our first digit was a one, now it's a zero. And then we had two zeros and two ones and three ones and three zeros and so on, you understand. So that is the bitwise not filter. So the next filter that we're going to take a look at is equals, which returns a Boolean, which is a true or false value, if both values are equal. So let's go ahead and apply that filter. And for the value in our filter, uh, we'll go ahead and put 50 here. And then for our base value, we will type 50 as well. And let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we get a true because both of those values are the same. The next filter we're taking a look at is even, which just returns whether or not the value is even. So we have an even number in our value. And let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we get a true because this value is even. If we were to put an odd number here instead, and run this again, you can see we are returned false. We also have odd, which is basically the same thing, but this returns a true or false based on whether or not the specified value is odd. The next few filters we're going to look at all do pretty much the same thing. We have greater than, greater than or equal, and then we also have less than or less than or equal. So all of these filters return a Boolean value, that's a true or false, based on whether or not the left value, so that's going to be this one right here, is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to the right value, which is the value that you specify in the filter. We have 33 in our left value box right now, so let's say uh, 55. And we'll go ahead and save this. And you can see we get a false because 33 is not greater than 55. All of those filters work exactly the same. So the next filter we're going to be talking about is in, which returns a true or false based on whether or not this value exists in an array. The first thing we're asked is what is the value we're searching for? So let's search for the number two. And for the left value box, we are actually just going to specify our array. And our array contains one, two, and three. So if we run this now, you can see we are returned a true because our array contains two. Now the next set of filters that we're going to go over is is. So we have is array, is boolean, is decimal, is empty, is integer, is null, is object, or is text. So these are the filters that are going to let you validate whether or not the data that you're getting back is actually the type that you need. So let's go ahead and apply the is array filter. And we are still using our array as the value. 
So when we run this, we are returned true because the value that we're using for this filter is an array. If we were to apply another one of these filters, let's apply the is object. So this returns a true or false based on whether or not this value is an object. And we save this and we run it again. You can see we're returned false because this is not an object. This is an array. The next filter that we're going to be talking about is not, which just returns the opposite of the value that you give it as a Boolean, so as a true or false. So let's go ahead and apply this filter, and my value is true. So if we save this and let's give it a run, you can see we are returned the opposite, which is false. The next filter that we're going to take a look at is not equals, which returns a Boolean if both of the values are not equal. So let's give our right value of 50 and our left value of 25. So when we run this, we are returned true because those values are not equal to each other. Now, the next filter we're going to talk about is between. Between applies to custom queries when you're querying a database table. What between allows you to do is determine whether or not a value inside the table is between a left and a right value that we set. So let's go ahead and apply this filter to my custom query here. And my value that I'm checking in this table, I only have one record, it's a value of 50. So my left value is going to be 10, and my right value is going to be 80. So what this is going to do is this is going to only return the records that have a number value between 10 and 80. Now we also need to specify a true or false in the right value so we know if we want records that do match this condition or don't match this condition. So I'm going to say true because I want the records that do match this condition. And let's take a look at that result. So you can see we are returned our single record because this has a number that is true based on the custom query using the between filter. Those are all of the comparison filters that we have available in Xano. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helps. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. You can also visit us in support chat inside Xano or at our Xano community at community.xano.com. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.